this presentation I'll be showing you how to download historical price and market or accounting information into Excel from Bloomberg. The first thing to check is one that Bloomberg is open, the application, and secondly that you have this Bloomberg ribbon available. You'll see there are a number of different tools that you can use to download information to Excel and we're going to focus on the historical data. So at the top of this toolbar at the left you'll see a button for real time or historical data. You click on that and you'll be choosing historical end of day data. Now a wizard will pop up and this will allow you to select the securities that you'd like to download information on. So starting off let's choose BHP. So I'm typing BHP, it's coming up with a drop down box and I can select the equity security. I'm now going to choose uh, a peer company, Rio Tinto, the Australian listing, AU, and then I'm also going to choose information on the exchange, so ASX 200, and double click on that like the others to bring that um, up. If I wanted to, I would also be able to pull up information on an entire index by selecting an index uh, in the second half of the screen. For example, if I said S&P 500, index on the drop down box and then it's letting me choose from securities so for example I could then choose either all of them or individual companies that I wanted to look at so I might just choose one company and then add that to the bottom when I've finished with my company list I'm going to select next now I need to choose the data fields that I want to download so I can do this in two ways. Firstly, I can choose or search for a field by typing it in this search text box, for example, price, and pressing enter. PX last is typically the field that you would use to download the end of day share price, and I'm going to double click on that. But if I'm interested in finding accounting related fields, it may be worth going back into the Bloomberg and searching under a page known as FLDS, enter, which will let me do a search for the data fields that are available for particular security. So if I put the security up here, BHP for example, and the data field that I'm after is earnings per share, and I press enter, it's going to give me a list of the data fields relating to earnings per share. They're actually 44 pages, but it's going to rank than by most used and, and most likely. So you'll see the first few here are, are all potentially relevant. The first one here is says best EPS and best when you're looking at Bloomberg always refers to consensus from analysts. If I want a full definition I can click on the item and it will give me more information about this particular data field. To get back to the previous page, I'll select the menu, end menu key on the keyboard. So I can see these are a couple of items that I'm interested in. I'm going to go back, now that I've seen that they're the right items, back to Excel. And I'm going to search, do the same search, EPS. I'm going to select both best EPS by double clicking on that. I'm also going to tr uh, download trailing 12 months EPS. I click on that and you'll see the same definitions are in Excel itself it's just that it can be easy to, uh, to navigate in the Bloomberg page so I'm happy with that last price consensus EPS or best EPS and then trailing 12 months earnings per share as well I'm going to hit next to go to the next page so this is where I'm choosing the period in the range of data the period can be selected at the top right I can choose weekly monthly quarterly data I'm going to choose semi-annual data to download for all of these items. 
And now I can choose the date range. What I'm going to choose is either between a series of dates by doing a fixed time series or a relative time series where I might be looking at the last 10 semi-annual periods. I'm going to do the last five years of data. Uh, therefore, that's going to be the last 10 semi-annual periods. OK, next. So this is quite important. This is going to be determining what, how I want to treat days where the data is not available. For example, uh, a, a weekend, a holiday, a trading halt. I would always recommend to select either all non-trading weekdays or all calendar days, and then uh, either carry over the last value or select a, a blank field for when the data is not available. Next, this is a selection of how you want to treat corporate actions. The recommended settings are, are typically recommended. Now, this is describing how it's going to be laid out. For example, is the data going to be oriented on the horizontal axis or the vertical axis? And whether you want to display the security and date fields. And finally, do you want this to be in reverse or chronological order? When you're happy with the settings, click Finish. It's going to begin the process of downloading the data. So now you see that it's downloaded the data sets that we're after. And you've got the information that we've requested. Now, if you wanted to make changes to the data that we've selected, all of the data that's been downloaded is being aggregated from this cell, the top date cell. The formula itself is obtained in this cell. And the format that it takes is equals BDH, open bracket, ticker, comma field or, or fields, comma start date, comma end date. Now these other arguments are all the other arguments that were used in the Excel wizard. If you wanted to change any of these or work out what they are and what they represent and, and what the overrides are, you can click on this FX button, click on to help on this function and you'll get a full description and information of the formulas, how they're represented, and any of the fields that you're able to override. What you'll also be able to do is if there are any of the arguments that you wanted to modify, you can click on that argument and it will give you the different selections that are available. So I'm going to leave it as is because I'm happy with the data that I've got there. And that's uh, the best way to download historical data.